We've gathered this afternoon as family and friends to celebrate and to honor the life of our friend, Charlie Gibson. First, on behalf of Kim and Ryan and Ivy and the entire family, thank you. Thank you, each of you, for your love, for your support, and for the kindness that you have shown this family during what has been a very difficult week for them. You know, today our hearts break together, but our focus this afternoon is on the life of Charlie Gibson. And Charlie Gibson's life was a life well lived. It was a life filled with enthusiasm. It was a life filled with humor and a life filled with a special love for his family and for his friends. Hear these familiar words of comfort from Psalm 23, which say this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Marvelous passage. And of all the promises that we see in this passage, the last one is the greatest. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. To Kim and the entire family today, we cannot fully understand the emotions and the hurt that you are feeling with the loss of Charlie. But there is one who can strengthen you and bring you comfort, and his name is Jesus Christ. Hold fast to your perfect shepherd. Allow Jesus to fill you even now. We celebrate today because of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and the marvelous promise of eternal salvation for those who trust in the Lord. Would you pray with me? Lord, we have come here today to thank you for the strength and the comfort that you promise us during times of need. And Lord, we need your faithfulness now. We need you today. Lord, may your hand of comfort be on this precious family. May your peace be with them as they grieve together. Lord, may the bond of family and friends be especially strong as we celebrate Charlie's life. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. See the angels' faces when 
like to share with you uh, a note from, from Kim, uh, Charlie's wife of almost 43 years. This is what Kim writes. What do I say about the man I've been married to almost 43 years? We started dating when I was 15. Charlie was 16. Got married when I was 18 and he was 19. And he and I both knew we were lucky that we grew up together instead of growing apart, marrying that young like so many do. We had some really great times and some not so great times, but I always knew that he loved me. He gave me a wonderful son that both of us could not have been more proud of. Ryan has been my rock during this terrible time. Charlie's sudden death has left me numb, confused, and scared, but I know with the love and support from our family and friends, Ryan and I will make it. Rest in peace, Charlie. I've loved you almost my whole life, and I'll love you forever, Kim. How do you, how do you best describe Charlie Gibbs? Man full of life, a man who live to engage in funny conversations with plenty of jokes to go around. No shortage. You know, Charlie's smile to me was always more of a sly grin. <laughs> it was almost like he was loading up for another funny quip or another funny comeback. I didn't realize it until I, I calculated. I don't do very good math these days, but I've known Charlie for almost 28 years. That's a long time for somebody to be part of your life. And whenever I would call the shop, whenever I would call Gibson's to make a service appointment or to report that I had an issue with my vehicle, if Charlie answered, if Charlie answered the phone, you were absolutely guaranteed to experience one of a kind customer service. <laughs> Perhaps many of you have experienced this style of service. I'll share with you how he treated me for a moment. <laughs> you typically, typically, it started with a personalized greeting, a, a customized greeting, depending upon the information Charlie had gathered from his caller ID. <laughs> He wouldn't say Gibson Service Center. How easy would that be? He wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say, hey, Chad, if I was calling. He wouldn't say that. Whenever I called, Charlie picked up the phone, and he immediately would answer, Marine Fisheries. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. But there was only one problem with that greeting. Never, either past 
present or future have I ever worked or been associated with marine fisheries. <laughs> but that was Charlie's inside joke with me, and I never once, never once, did I correct him for that. Didn't do it. We had other business to go through. Truth be told, I read this online, so this isn't original, but it hit home with me. Before you could get down to business at Gibson Service Center, you had to be heckled a bit by Charlie. That's just the way things were. He was the filter. And it typically went like this for me. Marine Fisheries, hey Charlie, good morning. Charlie, there's something wrong with my truck. Good. <laughs> Charlie, I'm not sure what the issue is. And he would quickly say this, don't worry, we'll fix it no matter how much it costs. <laughs> Customer service with a grin. That was Charlie's way. That was Charlie's way. Yeah, those of you who knew, know Charlie well, knew him as a notorious prankster, Charlie was. He liked practical jokes, he did. And one story in particular that Kim and Ryan shared this week was of an encounter that Charlie had with a construction worker when they owned the business on Water Street at the foot of the Camden Causeway. You remember that? When they were on the bulkhead there. Well, toward the end of a long, hot day, a construction worker had made his way to the shop and he sat down on the comfortable bench outside the shop. Well, he was quickly visited by Charlie. Charlie said, hey, can I help you? Construction worker asked, because it had been a long day, he needed a ride. Charlie, can you call me a taxi? To which our good friend Charlie replied, with hands on his hips, taxi, taxi, you are a taxi. <laughs> only from the mind of Charlie Gibson. <laughs> good natured, good humored, that was Charlie. And I witnessed a practical joke many years ago that was at his expense. Charlie was working on a tire, back when y'all worked on tires. Y'all don't do that anymore. But Charlie was working on a tire. <laughs> Charlie was working on a tire. And you know that tire tool where you stick it on there and you pop it and the wheel comes off? Well, Charlie was working on a tire. And many of you know Bird in there as well. All right, well, if you know Bird, you know about what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Charlie has his back to Bird and I. That's a problem, number one. <laughs> and Charlie's working diligently on this tire, and he grabs the air compressor, and he starts to put air in the tire. That's what people do when your tires are flat. Bird looks at me, and he says, watch this. <laughs> Man, y'all know that's code for something crazy is about to happen. Bird then, unbeknownst to our friend Charlie, takes a firecracker, <laughs> and he lights the firecracker, and he rolls it across the floor. Now, never mind that there's gas and there's oil. <laughs> all types of petroleum distillates all over this floor here. It was a day where it weren't really clean. That's a different story. The firecracker, the firecracker, perfectly placed by Bird. Talented aim of Bird. Right up against the busy feet of our good friend Charlie. <laughs> right up against his feet. Again, he didn't know this because sudden surprises always make the best practical jokes. That's how it goes. The firecracker, the firecracker waits. It waits. It sits, I'm watching this. <laughs> and it waits until Charlie has put the maximum amount of air <laughs> in that tire. It's like Bird is controlling the firecracker. <laughs> the firecracker explodes on cue. Charlie does not miss a beat. He doesn't miss a beat. With a sideways grin, he jumps magically up in the air. He looks at Bird and he simply says, that was a good one. <laughs> Charlie could give them, and Charlie could take them. He could. You know, Charlie loved racing. 
He loved being around cars. He loved working on cars. Racing was a passion that allowed Charlie to be close to Ryan, to be close to his family. In the New Testament, Paul tells us that life is like a race. And as Paul neared the end of his life, Paul wrote this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, for Charlie, for Charlie, the checkered flag came out a few laps earlier than expected. But Charlie fought the good fight, and Charlie finished the race. I think it's safe to say, as I heard this week, that Charlie, to many of us, is a local legend, Charlie Gibbs. Quite the character, but kind-hearted, a fun soul with a wonderful sense of humor. You know, back at the shop, back at the shop, at the end of every appointment, when the repairs or the service was complete, if Charlie was checking you out, or if Charlie was close enough to, to say goodbye, Charlie typically would say, very simply, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Except he shortened that to about three syllables. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. And what I realized, and this shocked me the last couple of days, is that Charlie somehow subliminally, which is scary, worked that saying, I appreciate you, into my vocabulary. Because I never said that till I was around Charlie. Now I find myself appreciating people all the time. <laughs> Charlie got to me. He did. He did. Personally, I deeply and greatly appreciated the opportunity to know and to be around Charlie Gibbs, a man who so cared for his family and made it a point to show a unique kindness to his friends. We appreciate you, Charlie. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for Charlie. Thank you for his family. We thank you for his friends. In Jesus' name, amen. You know how you, you, you remember things and the older you get, the facts get kind of mushed up in there. Well, this is one of those. I, uh, Charlie and I are about 10 years apart, so we didn't go to school together. I met Charlie after he out, you know, out of high school. And he told me one day, he said, Dickie, first time I remember being around you, there was a party inside of me of the bachelor party. And you and some guys were playing music. I don't know, might have been read, I don't know. He said, and y'all were having a big time. He said, and I stayed in there and I had a big time to the point where I lost track of time. <laughs> and this was supposed to be my first official date with Miss Kim. <laughs> and I was supposed to show up about 7.30ish. I didn't make it. <laughs> but in my mind, Okay, he's late for the date. So talking to Kim earlier this week, told her that. She said, late? He, didn't, he won't late, no. He didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Stood me up on our first date. I said, well, we were playing at that party. You were at that party? Okay. <laughs> well, I said, I bet Charlie had to do some awful big begging and apologizing. She said, well, then I think Ryan was the one who told me, said, well, see, Daddy was Mama's ride to school <laughs> <laughs> in his Ford Falcon. He picked up a bunch of students, charged everybody a dollar apiece to drive, drive them to school. <laughs> Except Kim, she rode free. <laughs> And she sat on the front seat, just heard it come. <laughs> Everybody else grabbed their backs. So that's just letting you know that uh, your memories can play tricks on you sometimes. OK, let me get this one down. Yep. 
There it is. Start us off, Red. Would you stand with me as we join together in prayer and commit Charlie Gibson to the Lord? <coughs> Dear Lord, we commend to you Charlie Gibson, husband and father, father-in-law, grandfather, son, and friend. Lord, we thank you for the promise of eternal life for those who put their trust in you. Lord, we thank you for blessing each one of us with Charlie's presence in our lives. And we thank you for those memories, Lord, that will persist. May your peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Sweet little robe and coat, 